Hi, I'm Gina, the creator and host of Feminine Roadmap Podcast, the podcast that is designed to have real talk around all things midlife and strategies to help us live a more vibrant second half. It is my deepest desire to help other people shift the conversation toward empowerment, toward vibrancy, toward excitement about what life has for us and what we can bring to the world, how we can each individually shine our light. So I invite you to grab a cup of something wonderful to join me each week or when you can and join me in my living room to have these conversations. And if you are enjoying this, please take the time to subscribe wherever you listen, rate my podcast, and share the episodes that help you, the episodes that encourage you. Let's build this community together. Welcome to my tribe. I'm so grateful you're here. Hello, Feminine Roadmappers. Welcome back to Feminine Roadmap Podcast the podcast that helps you navigate the challenges and changes of midlife and to live a more vibrant, intentional second half. Today, my guest is going to be talking to us about how fear, overwhelm, and anxiety cause the brain to be in chronic stress overload. And she is going to share a neuroscience tool to reset to our higher set point of connection and resilience in just three minutes. My guest is Dr. Laurel Mellon. She's the founder of Emotional Brain Training. She is a frequent guest on my show, but with the world being as it is, I wanted to have her back on with this amazing tool. Laurel, thank you for coming back on the show. Gina, it's always a pleasure to be with you. I love your program and I love being part of what you're creating here because I'm a woman of that age. You're a little bit older and I know that we need you. And right now, the amount of distress is really, really toxic. And I think all of us are feeling it. But what happened a couple of years ago with the beginning of the pandemic is the percentage of people that were in stress overload went from about 25, 28% up to 70%. So it's now the work that I do, which is emotional brain training, EBT, of how to use the natural pathways in the brain to get out of stress overload and back to that state where we're our best selves, where we're connecting to the deepest part of ourselves, our inherent strength, goodness, and wisdom. And from neuroscience, we now know how to do that. I have to say um, to the people that are listening, I've worked with Laurel before. I've gone through her intensive program. I've read the books. I've used the tool. I have the app and it's absolutely life-changing to use it on a regular basis. And so I want my listeners to understand since 2019, since you've been on the show, you're at the top of my viewership on YouTube, on our video of going from stress to joy. And it's such a good video. And I thought, what a perfect time. We talked about off the recording how the world has just become a very uptight, angry, stressful, fearful place. People are living in a chronic state of fear and anxiety. And we can see the effects of that in the way that people are behaving, in the way that they're driving, in the way that they're responding to other people. And I thought, What can I offer my listeners that will give them a tool to take back that emotional control of their life and not be so influenced? Like like we talked about that inner place of security and peace. And I immediately thought, okay, I'm going to have to reach out to Laurel. It's time again to uh, we're going to call emotional brain training for the rest of the show. It's going to be EBT. So anytime you hear us say EBT. We are talking about the tool, emotional brain training. So Laurel, let's talk about the actual effect of these things on the brain and why we're seeing such an increase and then how you help people with EBT to take back that power in their lives, to have the peace and the joy and that inner state of calm and resilience. It's such a great 
beginning to our work together today, Gina, to think about what is going on, because what happens when stress comes into the brain in an overwhelming speed and intensity is we have no defenses. So always with EBT, the first order of business is non-judgment and unconditional love for ourselves, because it's not our fault that the world is dumping huge amounts of stress and overload into our brains. And the fact of the matter is, at some level of stress, the emotional brain, which is the stress brain, becomes the powerhouse behind how we respond. Our thinking brain, our rational side, is useless. And that's really hard for us that are powerful women trying to create joy in our lives and do wonderful things with our family and our work and our communities to understand that it's not our fault that at this level of stress overload, everyone has their thinking brain which is essentially their control tower offline and the emotional brain just starts spewing stress overload. That means anxiety, depression, overwhelm, panic, numbness, mania, like making lists and lists. And this is natural and normal. And it's caused by stress, the stress hormone cortisol and cortisol is a very mean hormone. It's the root cause of mental health and uh, physical health problems. You do not want your brain and body to be running cortisol. Public health enemy number one. Mm -hmm. So number one, the more that happens and we don't have the tools to switch off that cortisol, Mm -hmm. the more we're gonna have problems. And as, as healthy, powerful women, what do we do when we have problems? We try to solve them. The problem is the real issue is that we have to learn how in our own brain to shut off the cortisol to shut off that stress response. And that's what EBT does. Mm. Now, because the stress is so high, I've noticed changes in behavior just in normal things, like we were talking about, the way people are driving, the way people react, the impatience, the impulsivity. Like I'm seeing huge shifts in people. And I, and I believe, and maybe you can confirm this, that this stress, this chronic stress and anxiety and fear is literally changing those structures in the brain. It's creating pathways. I don't even think people realize it. It's just, it has created these powerful pathways and ways of being. And I do agree with you. It feels like people's thinking brains have gone offline. It feels like that. And I don't mean that in an insulting way, but you just It feels animalistic, like we're just all in self-preservation mode. And there's really, we've lost that lack of empathy and and patience for other people. Is, is Is that an accurate way of expressing what's happening inside of our skulls? Exactly. We only have two kinds of circuits in our brain or pathways. There's the good guys and the bad guys. The good guys are the resilience pathways and they just make us, you know, our best selves. You know, we go into a difficult situation. We stay connected with ourselves. We spiral up to joy. We are of purpose. Everything's great. If in fact, there's been so much stress that we've activated instead the reactive pathways, they go straight to the bottom of our brain. They activate the reptilian brain, which is the worst. It only knows extremes. It's hungry, angry, frustrated, selfish, all those things that we would never, never, never do if we were running a a really good circuit, a resilient circuit. So the, the first is that the brain is now in the habit of having dominant circuits that are reactive. Everyone's feeling it. It's not just certain people that have difficult childhoods, or like most of us do, or a difficult um, situation in their own life or at work or at home or with family, everyone's feeling it. The dominant circuit in the brain of the typical American now is not the resilient circuit, but the reactive circuit. And it just spirals you down into extremes and toxicities. It does it. You, 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 it's not your fault. It does it automatically, universally, and in the moment. We're all exposed to that toxicity. Mm. And while that sounds absolutely horrible and hopeless, which I think is the other emotion that people have begun to feel in the world as it is today, that's why I reached out to you because there is hope and there are resources and tools that we can use. So let's go ahead and talk about the tool that you offer, EBT, and the ways that it's offered. 
to people because I think this is the whole point. We all know the world feels upside down and sideways, but what can we do about it individually? That's the solution I bring to the table with you as my resource today. Thank you. And first of all, I want to uh, explain that the research has now shown that all the methods that we really, really believe work and work when we're in low stress are completely ineffective when you're in stress overload. The reason is that they they don't deal with the emotional extremes that are normal when you're in stress overload. And so if you ask yourself, how do I feel? Or let's do positive thinking, or let's be mindfully aware, or let's relax, or let's get off the couch. All of those things that are so easy to do when we're in a resilient mode, you know, not in over stress overload, the brain cannot do. It's not that we won't do them or not motivated to do them. The brain can't function in that way. And I'm going to show you the EBT pathway. I want everyone to learn this pathway and to start using it. The caveat is it's a simple skill that takes two, about two minutes to use. So you can do it when you're in line at the grocery store, you can do it when you're in the car, you can do it between visits with a patient or a client, you can do it when you just need to go take a bathroom break and you need to go in there, you just, there's an app and you just pull it out and you do it. The issue is, is that most of us have such a strong habit of being in stress overload that our job now is to raise that stress habit or that set point in stress The number one thing we can do to improve the quality of our health, our relationships, our productivity, our enjoyment of life, being our best, most loving self is to raise the set point of the brain. So the habit goes back not to where it used to be before a couple of years ago, but even better because we know we want to have the highest set point possible. So we're in that state of loving connection more of the time. The method was, was essentially discovered in 2007. It's now very simple. And the odd thing about it, Gina, is every part of this is the opposite of what we're normally told. Mm-hmm. Everything I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to go step by step so that, that your listeners can really start using this right now. And then what they do is they use it five times a day for a warm-up dose. And then if they really want to raise their set point, they're going to do it 10 times, which seems like a lot except every time you do it, it only takes two minutes and you get this glow about you. You get this dopamine surge. So all of a sudden you had before you just didn't want to do anything and everything looked terrible. Now everything looks beautiful. And you say, this is really weird. (laughs) Why doesn't everyone know about this? So I'm going to show you, but the other part, I want you to keep your sense of humor because literally as I developed this, this method and reconstructed it to be based on how the brain actually worked, Every single single thing in it was something my mother told me not to do. So it it takes a little relearning. Can I start with the first step? Absolutely. And and I do want to have people understand that this is something you can do while we're list while you're listening. You can practice with it. And this really works. So I just really am excited to share this. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, we're going to jump in. And the first thing you want to do is you want to complain. And the reason you want to complain, just short and sweet, just the facts, is because that will activate one of those reactive circuits that are causing all that stress and putting the reptilian brain in charge. And that cortisol spewing out that's making you sick and hungry and upset and anxious. So you want to complain. Can I can I teach you how to do it as we go? How would that be? I know, you know, but is it but one way to do it is just to do it, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And, I, and if you're like me, you need to have an example. It's easier if there's a, a visual audio kind of version of what you're doing. So let's do it. Great. So Gina, take a nice deep breath and connect with your body. Remember, your body is where you experience your emotional brain. That's where your wisdom is. As long as you're in your head, thinking, 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 you're not going to really get that beautiful connection that you really need to be your best self. So the first thing I want you to do is turn your attention to your body and your breathing. And just breathe once or twice, just to remind yourself that your wisdom's in your body and you're going to pay attention to your body because that's where you experience the messages from your emotional brain. Tell me when you've got that. Got it. Okay. And just give yourself a little relief from stress. And the way you do that is 
you know how women are powerful and you've got to get in your power stance. So just put your shoulders back a little bit and your chin up and that will lift some of your stress. So you won't feel quite so overwhelmed. Just shoulders back and chest out. I am a warrior. You know, I am here to make my life better and make the world a better place. Tell me when you've got your shoulders back like that. I've got it. Good. And remember, if you, uh, what we most need is to be able to be seen, heard, and felt by ourselves. That's why babies, to have a secure attachment, need to be seen, heard, and felt by their mothers and fathers or grandmothers or whoever's raising them. Well, in this time uh, in the world, we need that skill for ourselves. So take just a moment. I want you to warmly observe yourself. Really see yourself in the present moment and even feel a wave of compassion for yourself. Life is not easy for anyone. So just feel that wave of compassion for yourself. And when you have that, let me know and we'll go on. I'm ready. Great. Now, Gina, you feel connected, right? Mm -hmm. Feel connected. Now, that part of EBT is the least powerful part of it, but it's a nice warm up. Now we're going to get really quick and really powerful. Now I'm going to go more slowly with you because I want the listeners to be able to understand exactly how to do this so they can really, really see the results as we go. So the first thing I want you to do is I'm going to tell you what to do and why it works in the brain. The first thing to do is I want you to complain. No, do not express emotions because that reduces your stress and you actually want to increase your stress so you can roust out one of those bad circuits, one of those reactive circuits. If you can roust it out, you can clear it, but you've got to first roust it out. So you're going to say the situation is, and you're going to say two or three sentences to tell the story, to begin to tell the story about something that's bothering you, the situation, just the facts no feelings, just say it like it is, as if you were four years old. No, no complexities here. Just simple. Okay. The situation is that we had the money to fix the house, to get it painted and fixed, and then the heater went out. And so now we're back down to having to earn the money back up, save it back up to get the house painted. And I was hoping to have it painted this spring. I'm really, really frustrated. The house is not painted. It was okay, great. To be painted. And I'm not happy. Great. Okay. You did it precisely correctly. Notice that after you said a few sentences, you sort of slowed down a bit because you felt complete. Mm -hmm. All of EBT is fun and natural. So when your real, your brain is done expressing it, you'll have a natural pause. So take a nice deep breath. And now what we're going to do is avoid thinking. Remember thinking is the problem. Emotional processing is the solution. So we're going to now turn your attention to that beautiful body of yours and say to yourself, what I'm most stressed about is, and your unconscious mind will tell you which part of that is the most disturbing to you. And the part that's the most disturbing to you activates a circuit that is going to cause you the most trouble. So that's the one we're going to target and dismantle. So what I'm most stressed about, pause and wait to see what your body tells you. Mm. What I'm most stressed about is how to solve that financial problem. Like that's not how to get, how to get more money. Yeah. How to get, how to get that money and get it taken care of. Get. And (laughs) and on top of that, I think we may have termites. So that stresses me out. Great. Take a nice deep breath. And we're going to just allow some time for your brain to process that. And we're going to find the one thing that bothers you the most. Sometimes it takes a couple times when you say you're letting your emotional brain be the boss and be the wise one and tell you what is the, what is bothering you the most. It's the survival brain. It does that really well. So take a nice deep breath. What bothers me the most in the simplest of languages, what bothers me the most is like we don't have enough money or there's the, the house is falling apart. What bothers me most is not being able to, to fix these things. I can't fix these things. I can't fix these things. Okay. So perfect. 
Now, this is exactly what we were told not to do. You know what most people do is they start analyzing. They start making plans. They start saying, well, why do I feel this way? What's wrong with me anyway? And instead, keep it as a four-year-old. The four-year-old inside of you is brilliant. And right now, Gina got it down to, I can't fix these things. Perfect. And I'm going to ask you to write that down. I can't fix these things. Now, this is the hard. She's done the hardest part of the work. What she's going to do now is she's just going to move through her emotions. She's first going to express a great big bunch of healthy, productive, safe anger. Now, that's the other thing my mother said to me. Now, women can't be angry. Okay. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you don't have a healthy, productive, passionate, I feel angry skill to protest being hurt, you will be a willing victim and become depressed, anxious, panicked, ashamed, and numb. And you're going to be hungry for all the things that aren't good for you. And it's not your fault. It's biochemical. You absolutely must express healthy, productive anger because it immediately puts the thinking brain back online. So you're really smart. You're really sharp. You're really perceptive. And it clears away a lot of that cortisol that's so harmful in the extremes of emotions. So we're going to go in and stay on that topic throughout the, all the emotions. We're going to go from anger to then one sadness, one fear, one guilt, one grateful, one happy, one secure, and one proud. And she's going to be at a bright, shiny brain state one and feel at her best with a glow. And then we'll move forward to take action. So we're going to go in. I'm going to ask you to say again, what I'm most stressed about is just to get yourself primed again. Yeah. What I'm most stressed about is. Most stressed about is I can't fix my house. Now just stay on topic. I feel angry that I can't fix my house. I can't stand it that I fix my, I hate it. And then just go into about eight or 10 until it clears. It, I, I do feel angry that I can't fix my house. I'm irritated that I can't fix my house. I'm pissed about it. I'm frustrated. I feel stuck that can, because I can't fix my house. I can't stand the fact that I can't fix my house. Stay in anger until it turns to sadness. I hate it. And get down into your body like an animal. Because remember, when we're in stress, we're like a reptile, reptile. And we have to go down and clear the reptile away. And that means getting kind of fundamental, you know, really primitive. I hate it. I hate, I hate it. It's very it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And it shifted, didn't it? Mm. Okay, this is natural, it's universal, whether you have a child six years old, a, a mother or grandmother 96, it's the same process. It shifts to sadness naturally, and then we're going to slow it way down. Now, you'll get really good at this, you practice it, you can be in groups that do it, you use the mobile app, you take the, the guesswork out of it, but watch what's going to happen now. When you go into your body again, trust your body, Gina. My deepest, my one deepest sadness is don't, don't start saying, I feel sad that, and I feel sad that, I feel sad about this. I feel you're going to get your brain all confused and overwhelmed. You just get one deep sadness. It's so clean, cleansing, so powerful. My deepest sadness is, and then once you recognize it, you're just going to let it course through your body without saying a word. You just want to feel it course through your body. My deepest sadness is. My deepest sadness is, you want me to say it? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, my deepest sadness is that I feel like it will never change. My deepest sadness is I feel like it will never change. Perfect. Trust those words and feel it, the sadness until it fades and tell me when you're ready for more. You're doing beautifully. Okay. And it will naturally turn into fear. When you face this fear and feel it, you will be liberated from panic and anxiety. This is very, very powerful. My deepest fear is. Mm, my deepest fear is. Mm, it'll never get better. I'm not sure what my deepest fear is. If something doesn't change, if it's as bad as I think it is, the worst thing that could happen, once you face your deepest fear, it will lose its power over you. If this is even worse than I think, and I didn't make any changes at all, and everything that could go wrong did go wrong, mm -hmm. I feel afraid that I'd never be able to fix it. Yeah. Great. I'd never be able to fix it. Yeah. 
stay in the feeling until it fades. Now, Gina is advanced in EBT. She is doing it very deeply. When you first start, it takes much less time because you, you're not used to going so deep. So you kind of flip through it, which is absolutely fine. So she's going to a deeper level because she's highly experienced with the method. So stay with the fear until it fades. Okay. And then put your shoulders back and say, hey, I have some power here. Why don't I just, this is, I feel guilty that I, in the best of all worlds, I would just go ahead and do such and such. I have power. Why don't I just, I feel guilty that I, this is really important because once you identify what you could do differently, the brain opens up all of the channels of positive emotions in your brain. It's miraculous. I feel guilty. I have power here. Why don't I just. Hmm. I have power here. Why don't I just. Find a way to contribute to help. Great. Wonderful. So sit with that until it fades. Beautiful. And you're going to notice a slight shift in your body and positive emotions will start flowing. And you'll be drawn to saying, but I do feel grateful that. But I do feel grateful that my home is sound and that I have a home. (laughs) Very nice. Now it's real fast. And I feel happy that. And I feel happy that. I'm blessed with what I have. And I feel secure that. And I feel secure that it will get taken care of. (laughs) And I can hear the smile in your voice. And you can feel that when you're smiling and feeling positive, this is really important for those of you who are doing trauma work Mm -hmm. and doing deep work about the past. There's a tendency in therapy today to try to focus on the negative Mm -hmm. and bring that up. But that's only half the job. Once you've cleared away, which Gina just did with angry, sad, afraid, guilty, she cleared away that that reactive trauma circuit. Unless you go to the positive and find the positive emotions in your body, the stress response does not shut off. Mm -hmm. It calms a little bit, but it requires, our biology requires that we be in joy that we open our hearts and our minds to the positive emotions, you know, love and compassion and gratitude and hope and forgiveness and awe and security and pride. These positive emotions are medicine, Mm -hmm. but it's not when we're feeling stressed out and we just try to tack on a few positive emotions because that's not authentic. The brain requires that we go through the portal of our negative emotions to clear away that reactive circuit that's the problem and then it opens us to the resilient circuits that give us all the joy and that's what's our emotional cleanse that's what raises our brain set point and that gives us into a state of habitually and and easily being our best selves so that was beautifully done so take a nice deep breath i feel secure that and i do feel proud again i feel proud that I feel proud that we've made a life for ourselves and own a home. Yeah, good. Great. And can you feel a slight tingle in your arms or a lightness in your chest or a slight positive emotion, even yeah. joy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what, what Gina is feeling now is different than the happiness that you get from what's called hedonic pleasures, you know, eating, drinking, spending, you know, all that. That is very flat, positive emotions. It's separated from reality and it's dependent upon ingesting or injecting or purchasing something. What Gina's just done is giving herself the optimal biochemistry in her entire body and brain. And that we refer to as joy. That's why you hear in EBT that you get from stress to joy because that joy is rooted in reality. It's a gritty joy. It's a deep, profound spiritual joy because the brain is in a state of connection and it's not dependent on any substance to get there. It's perfectly natural. There is no medication that will give you joy. It's by spiraling 
down through your negative emotions, up through your positive ones and moving forward. And you have the perfect chemical elixir that will you can bolt on to any other medication you use and it will be more effective and longer lasting. Okay, beautifully done. And you can feel that in your body? Yes. Okay, that's grounded joy. That's what we're after. Now take a, a nice deep breath and notice that I used to study with a woman named Candace Pert, who was a neuroscientist who did a tremendous amount of work in understanding endorphins. And she was an ebt -er. I used to do cycles and spiral ups with her. And she always said to me, you know, Laurel, it's really about joy and bliss. But in that moment of bliss that you feel right now, if you stay there, the brain will start you ruminating, thinking about what you should do and obsessing because evolutionary biology wants us to be contributors in this world. The world needs people who are in joy, wired at one, moving forward with purpose. And so immediately after you get that bliss state, that state of connection, pause and really enjoy it. So I want you to really enjoy it because you've done that. And then right when you'd start to worry about something or how am I going to do this? You use the second part of EBT, which is called the take action tool. It takes 45 seconds to use it. You say, I expect myself and what you're going to do to move forward. You're going to find some encouraging words. You're going to find the hard part of following through. And then you're going to get a huge bolt of, of very healing chemicals by saying the purpose, the deeper purpose for why you're going forward. So are you ready to use a take action tool, Gina? Sure. Okay, take a nice deep breath. And again, most of this, remember that the emotional brain is the seat of the soul and it's the center of connectivity. So your job, even though we have many people in our lives that, that love us or we love, essentially our first relationship is with ourselves. And so what Gina is going to do now is on a very emotional and spiritual level, take a moment and just see herself in the present moment and feel a wave of gratitude for the gift of life and to appreciate her opportunity to go forward and make the world and her world a better place. So just that moment of reverence of seeing yourself is deeply gratifying. And when you can see yourself, then you say, you know, given all this, given all that's going on, given all this, I expect myself to do the best I can to, and then you're going to wait and see what comes up, see what appears in your mind from your emotional brain. Given all that, I expect myself to go forward. I expect myself to do the best I can to, and see what comes up. Given all that, I expect myself to move forward to gratitude. Ah, to appreciate what I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take a nice deep breath. Now take a moment and you're going to need a cheerleader there. You're going to need someone to say uh, some positive, powerful words like I can do that. Or it's important to be just short. So a little bit of encouragement, positive and powerful thought. Um, I can do that. There's so much to be grateful for. Look at how blessed I am. Again, take a nice deep breath and just enjoy that flowing through your body. But in order to follow through with anything that's worth doing, we have to challenge ourselves just a little bit to be kinder, more loving, more responsive people to what the world is really giving us right now. And so we face the essential pain. What's the hard part for you in following through? Once she identifies her hard part, she is going to have much more energy to effortlessly follow through and do what would otherwise be really, really, really hard things. So is the essential pain, I am alone. No one's going to save me from this. I've got to do it myself. Um, I am not perfect. These are the most common essential pains of life that make us evolve, more mature, more effective in the world. I am not in complete control. It takes work. Some people may reject me. I must receive, because sometimes when we're really stressed, we forget the beauty around us and all the goodness that is ours. I must receive at a deeper level, 
Or last, I must give even more than I thought I needed to give. I must give at a deeper level in order to feel complete. The essential pain, the hard part for me, that if I faced, I could follow through with ease and grace. Mm. I think the my essential pain is I'm alone. Great. Beautiful. Say with that now. Mm. That is the first circuit of emotional evolution when we face that no one can save us from the responsibility of our lives, from using our lives well and beautifully from our experiences and that we turn our attention to our own sanctuary inside our own body. It gives us a huge boost of power. So we're not looking for external solutions all the time. Mm -hmm. So central pain is I am alone. Feel that in your body. Remember you're training your brain for amazing resilience. Each time you spiral up, each one counts. Okay. Until it fades. And then I want you to open your heart and your mind and even your body to the higher order reward that your body can uh, feel because your thinking brain thinks of what's the higher reward. And what it does is it rings the bells in your emotional brain and gives you amazing amounts of dopamine and endorphins. So if I can face that essential pain, I am alone. It's worth it because the earned reward for me, the higher reward for me, and these are the seven higher rewards of EBT are sanctuary, peace and power from within, authenticity, feeling whole and being genuine, vibrancy, healthy with that zest for life, that real sense of aliveness, integrity, that feeling in your body that you know that you are doing the right thing, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard, you can do the right thing. Intimacy, the very sophisticated skill of being able to both give and receive love. Spirituality, as you define it, the grace, the beauty, the mystery of life, and last, freedom. All of those external solutions have long since faded, and you are living a life of joy and purpose. So what is the earned reward that would make it reasonable and even easy for you to follow through with feeling that gratitude, Gina? What's your earned reward? We list them all real quickly again. Yes. Sanctuary, authenticity, vibrancy, integrity, intimacy, spirituality, and freedom. You could have more than one if you want. I feel like vibrancy and freedom resonate with me. Vibrancy and freedom. So feel that right now in your body. It's just taking that moment to feel the chemical effect in your body that's so powerful until it fades. And you'll notice a slight surge of joy in your body. We call that joy. It can be a tingle, a lightness of being, a relaxation, a wave in, uh, in, through your body, a flow. Any physical signs you feel, sensations that are there just because you did this spiral up. What would that be? Could you describe the sensations in your body? It's like a, it's like a, a calm, like a. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the best way I know how to describe yeah, it. You let go of all the pressure and mm -hmm. the overwhelm and the loss. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So stay in that state. That is, there's no pill that will do that for her. And you can see Gina did it <clears throat> a very deep spiral up. And it's just a skill we want everyone to learn, whether it's our grandparents or our children. We want everyone to learn this because that's how you raise your set point. That's how you get out of cortisol overload. And that's how you create a new and better life for yourself at a higher set point, at a higher level of experiencing life. And that brings us joy and health and vibrancy and love. That was beautifully done. Thank you. I would love to have you share the tools, the way people can get in touch with these tools, because they can listen to this podcast over and over. But what are the resources that you offer that will help them understand it and, you know, see it with their own eyes and work through it? Yes. Wonderful. The, the method is emotional brain training, EBT, and the website is EBT. Uh, dot org. It's not a dot com. It's a dot org. 
when you go there, what you'll find is a lot of information. And the most important thing is choose a membership that's right for you. Some people just want to get the app and see the videos and be able to drop in on a few sessions with EBT providers. We train health professionals in this, of course, and that just a basic membership is plenty. Other people say, you know, I'm not going to do it unless I'm in a group. And so there's weekly groups. And also some people say, I have no time. I want to get rid of this stress and I want a daily intensive for 30 days. So literally we have have made every kind of a membership imaginable. Choose the one that's right for you. And then once you get the app, because every membership includes the app, we want you to share that app at no additional cost with your spouse, with your adult children, with other people. We just want people to get this method. So it's at ebt.org. Also, when you start using EBT, because it's the only method that's based on physiology, in other words, these circuits that I've been sharing with you, these reactive circuits that cause the cortisol, cortisol is public health enemy number one. So when you go to your therapist, your therapist is trying to figure out how to change your circuits so you're not secreting cortisol all the time. If you go to your doctor, whether it's an internist or even a specialist, they're doing the same thing because most of the problems we're facing now are symptoms of people not having the skills to switch off the stress response. As you begin doing this first five times a day, and then when you get the hang of it, 10 times and even moving up your set point with these beautiful ways of rewiring the brain that are more sophisticated, you're going to see changes in your biochemistry. For example, we have just the other day, a woman came in and she said, I'm now off my antidepressants. I didn't try to go off them, but I was feeling really good after you know going through EBT for about six months. And I just didn't seem to need as many anymore. And my doctor said to go ahead and and cut down on them. Another woman said, I have this terrible arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, and it's caused by stress. And my doctor sent me to EBT. So in other words, this simple process does everything from prevention for kids. Kids are so stressful now, stressed out now, and teenagers and, and also young adults so stressed all the way to later in life when we have more of these troubles, particularly with weight or diabetes or eating disorders or anxiety or depression. So essentially this one tool that that Gina just used can change the quality of your life and the length of your life. So appreciate that you'll get used to using it. And all of a sudden you'll notice that you don't want the extra food or you don't feel so upset when you're in a relationship All these things are natural because you've gone to the root cause and you've changed the circuits in your brain. Because as Gina said to begin with, the brain has changed for everyone from the last two years of stress. And you know what? Let's not cry over spilt milk. We can't do anything about it, but we can take charge and raise our set point by spiraling up throughout the day as the primary way that we really celebrate the gift of life and how much we have to give back to the world and how much enjoyment we have in our lives and how much power we have in our lives right now. So is it a tool then, Laurel, that people might be thinking, do you use it when you're upset? Do you use it when you're happy? Is there an optimal time to use it? Yes. First of all, there's two factors here. Number one, when you start EBT, you are in chronic stress. And so the tool, the simple tool we just used, uh, you want to start by using five times a day because you want to break into that stress. Essentially, stress is like a vice. It gets caught, the brain gets caught in stress and it can't get out. So you're going to use it throughout the day, uh, every so often, five times a day, and you're going to start to feel better. And then you say, you know, I want it. I think I could do it more. And you're going to get up to maybe eight to 10 times a day. And all of a sudden you say, gosh, I'm all of a sudden, I'm just so much more relaxed and I'm feeling better. So the first step in EBT is to treat the chronic stress. The fact that the brain is locked into stress first with five times, because you don't, you know, you want to go slowly. It's got to be fun. And then 10 times. And then you say, wow, I feel so great, but I know I get triggered now and then. And I know I have a big big, deep circuit in the bottom of my brain that triggers me to be anxious in social situations or triggers me to be perfectionistic or triggers me to think I shouldn't, I'm not worthy or to overeat or to just be lethargic. I have these triggers. Maybe most people have two, three, four of them. 
And so you, there's a there's on there's videos there on the site so you can learn how if you have something that triggers you, you use a slightly different tool. It's called Stop a Trigger. And it just zeroes in on that message, that old message that's at the bottom of your brain, and it switches it off in the moment. So let's say you have a drive to overeat and you say, I'm going to use the stop the trigger tool. Your drive to overeat because the circuits causing it will diminish. So you get immediate results. So you, you essentially rewire some of those, anything that bothers you, if it does, anytime that you get really, really stressed, remember that's perfect because it's only when you get really stressed that the circuits open up. Mm. So you want to use it five to 10 times a day. And then you also want to use it anytime that you feel stressed, you're going to say to yourself, how perfect is this? Now we've been told, I was saying about my mother, my mother used to tell me now, just relax, Laurel, just relax, relax, always stay calm. Of course, that in addition to don't be angry, (laughs) it's a double whammy, right? And so um, the truth is, if you try to stay calm all the time, you are going to suppress your negative emotions. They're going to go to the bottom of your brain and they're going to cause worse and worse stress overload and more and more emotional, psychological and physical health problems. And then you'll stay very busy fixing those. But the root cause is the suppression of emotions. So I want you to develop a really empowering attitude toward feeling bad. Feeling bad is good. If you have EBT, you're going to use it as a moment of opportunity to switch off that reactive circuit, get rid of that cortisol, activate those beautiful states of well-being and your joy, get back to joy. So with that in mind, just those few steps will change your life and your health. Mm. So they can go to EBT, EB is in boy, T is in Tom.org. And they can choose the membership that works best for them. I have a membership. She also has books. You have books. Yes, there's books on Amazon. Uh, They are the stress solution. And they are also another book. The little book on the method is called What's My Number? So you can figure out how to get out of stress in all levels of stress. Uh, Also, there are more substantial books, one for stress overload for emotional health issues. It's a 30 day program and one for stress eating, uh, which is also a 30 day program. These are very, very powerful books. The reason that we encourage you to go to EBT.org is the, the pathway in the brain is several steps. The pathway in the brain for resilience is several steps. And we want you not to have to think your way through that. We want you to have the app reach for that app, keep that app with you everywhere you go. And when you're stressed, you're going to spiral up and you're going to do it. You're going to say, oh my gosh, it really worked. So we want you, the books are also included with all memberships. So, but if you don't, not into apps, just go to Amazon, otherwise go to ebt.org and you'll get the whole package. So you can have the support, the app and the books all together. Now the app, for those of you who are, who like apps, it actually takes you through the steps. You literally walk it. So if you need a guide, so you're not having to remember the steps, the app is a perfect tool because it literally walks you through it. And you get a joy point at the end, which is cool. Yes. And instead of counting calories or things on your list that you've checked off, you count joy points. And the more you spiral up to joy, the more your whole biochemistry changes and you say, Gosh, I'm back to being my best self again. I love that. Yeah. Well, Laurel, again, I want to thank you so much for coming back on the show and for sharing this tool for such a time as this. I mean, there could not really be a more perfect time for this resource as it is now. I'm very grateful to you, Gina, for all you give to the world and to me. It's my pleasure. Today, friends, I've been speaking with Dr. Laurel Mellon. She is the founder of Emotional Brain Training. And if you head over to www.feminineroadmap.com forward slash episode 265, you will find links there to her and her resources. While you're there, please leave your name and email address. I send out periodic encouraging emails. Friends, this has been an unprecedented time in most of our lifetimes. The level of stress and fear and anxiety 
has impacted the whole world all at the same time. And it has not let up. It has shifted. And so instead of hunkering down and powering through, I wanted to bring this resource to you because as each one of us works to rewire our brain in a way that takes us back to our best self and our best state, and it's doing it biologically, it's it's not put on. This is something we're doing with our brain. We can use science neuroscience and be better and do better. And the more of us that do this, imagine the ripple effect when this tool gets out to the world and we share this message. So if you've never shared a podcast in your life, share this podcast. This is life-giving, life-saving for people who are struggling with depression. This is something that literally changes the structure of your brain, then changes the structure of your life, then changes your relationships and the world you live in. This is so important. Please take the time to check out the resources and share this with everyone you know. Thank you so much for being with us today. I look forward to sharing more powerful resources and conversations with you in the weeks to come. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.